What's up, y'all? Mike with Sports Templates back at it again. And today I'm going to show you how to take this Photoshop basketball shorts mock-up and make this awesome design. Let's get started. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future tutorials. And without further ado, let's get into this template. So before we get into editing and, and all the details of the template, I do want to show you everything that you get with this. Okay, you get four views of the basketball shorts. So what we're looking at here is the front three quarter view. So kind of tilt it on a three quarter angle so you can see the side a bit. You're also going to get a straight on front view. You're going to get a back three quarter view and then you're going to get a straight on back view. So all four of those views are included with this template. We're going to stick to the front three quarter view so we can see the front design and a bit of the side. And so let's get into it. Uh, we do have a library here with some, some of the design elements and colors that are included with this template. So we'll be referencing that as we go through and we'll put that in the description for you. So you can go down and grab a copy from the description if you want to follow along. So let's get into this. We've got lots of layers here um, and we're going to start actually in the editable parts group. Okay, we'll go do our background layer. I think in, in previous templates that you might have seen me demonstrate for you, I would start with the background, but we're going to take a different approach this time. Start with the editable parts and when we get into that folder, you can see we've got lots of other uh, layers and folders in here. Um, so let's just work our way down. Let's open up this leg designs folder and we can see we've got a lot going on in there. Um, so we've got these smart objects for the left and right leg design. Um, actually, that's those are both the left leg design. Uh, one of them is showing a tiny little part down in here, so I'll show you that later. Uh, right leg design is here. Left leg designs are over here. So let's take a look at our reference image and see what we need to do here. Okay, so we've got to get some, some striping going on. Got a little design here on the side. A little triangle type design. Okay, so let's see what we can do to match that. So let's go to our right leg design. That's going to be this one over here. Double click here to open up the smart object. And to make it easy for you, we have actually placed pre-made pinstripes in the template and they're already placed right where you would want them to be to get the right look. So we're gonna go ahead and set that. I'm gonna turn off the background color. If we wanted to, we could use this background color layer to set the background color of the actual leg underneath the pinstripes. But I'm gonna turn that off because I'm gonna show you another way we can also set the color. So there's always multiple ways you can kind of do things from within here. Um, so you can see, I don't know if you can see, but there's some pinstripes there, but um, the color is is not quite right, right? So if we go to the right leg color, we'll just set that to our dark royal blue. And there we have our pinstripes on that side. Uh, let's set the left leg color to the same. Now we won't see that change because we have um, a design on top of it that we haven't set yet. So let's go ahead and set that. We're going to click into our smart object. I'm going to turn on those pinstripes. I'm going to turn off the grid in the background. I'm going to hit control or command S to save this. And that's going to make our changes take effect. And now we have our stripes there. Now this layer is the left leg design. This layer that I want to show you is the left leg inside design. So if you look really closely, let's zoom in on this template and get a really good look at a lot of the details and the texture. And I'm using control plus to zoom. Okay. And then I'm going to hold the space bar so I can get my little hand icon and kind of drag around. Now down here, there's this cutout on the front of the shorts and it shows through to the back and you're seeing the inside of the shorts. And so there's another smart object here that's only showing this part of the design. And you can see it's a little bit offset. So the, you know, just to make it look realistic, the pinstripes don't line up perfectly or anything like that. So if you turn that off, you'll see that that design kind of goes away. Um, so that's just to add some realism. So whatever design you're placing on the outside of the shorts, you're also going to see uh, on the inside if you want to, right? You don't have to, you can turn it off if you want to, and you'll just see whatever color of the shorts that you've set there. And of course you can see all the texture of the, the material and, and everything when we're zoomed in this close. I'm going to go ahead and hit control 
zero or control a command zero if you're command if you're on a Mac and we're gonna zoom that back out and that looks pretty good um, so let's see now for our reference image what else we want to do um, so we need to get this triangle design also there um, on that same layer so I already closed it but I'm gonna go ahead and open it back up because I'm gonna also show you another way to do it um, so if we go to left leg design okay got this shape up here in our library I'm just gonna drag it down into place and I want it to be on top of the pinstripe, so I'm going to move that layer group up. And inside there is just a lot of um, a lot of shapes that make up the pinstripes. And you can you can change the colors if you wanted to do different colored pinstripes and things like that. You can you can do all that. So I'm going to just adjust this position of this. And actually, I didn't want for that to go inside the pinstripes layer. So let me just put it right above. I'm going to adjust the position of this. Let's just move it down. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Let's do it again. Move it down. And let's just kind of see where we end up. I'm going to go ahead and I don't want to close this layer. Um, what I was going to show you is you can click here. I'll just do it. If you, if you haven't done controller command S to save it, if you click on the X, it'll ask you if you want to save it and then you can, and it'll close it. Now, Normally I wouldn't close it in this situation because I think I need to make some adjustments, right? So you can see here, um, I kind of want this point to be centered with this point of the cutout and also probably lined up with that pinstripe. Um, so I'm just gonna go back in and I'm just gonna, if I turn on my background, be able to see kind of where I'm at. Um, I wanna just move this to the left a little bit so the tip aligns with this pinstripe and yeah, I could use the arrow keys to kind of nudge it around back and forth. I'm doing that now. Um, if I want to just use the mouse to do it, um, I don't want it to move up and down. And sometimes this can be a little bit sensitive. Um, so I'm going to hold the shift key. And while I drag to the left, it's not going to allow it to move up or down since I started dragging left and right first. Um, so I'm going to let that go. And I'm going to click my check mark there to finalize that position. Turn off the background again, and I'm going to hit Control Command S. I'm not going to close this layer or this tab this time because I want to see if it lined up where I want it. And look at that, it did. It's right where I'd like it to be. If we compare it to our reference image, oh, it's it's exactly where it needs to be for the most part. So we're we're looking good there. So we've got our legs set, right? We've got our pinstripes, we've got our color, we've got our little design here on the side panel. Um, if we wanted to add some other stuff, we could. We've actually got, um, let's say we wanted to put a side panel design there. We could we could do that. Now that's, you know, not going to work with this design that we're doing. Um, but we do have uh, a color option and a smart o object there if you wanted to put a specific design in there. And you can always kind of move things around if you want to, right? So maybe you wanted to do a side panel design and this little triangle type thing we have on the bottom. You could rearrange, you know, some layers if you want to, um, to kind of get things to look how you want. Um, we're not going to utilize that now, but let's look at what else we need to do to kind of finish off these legs. So if we go to our reference image, we can see we've got some trim on the bottom. Uh, it's white with black, right? So white is the top color, black is the bottom color. So let's see how we want to do that. Um, so we don't need this anymore. I'm happy with the placement there. I'm going to close that. Um, and let's go to, let's find those, right? So those are, those are the cuffs and we've got those here. Oh, sorry, let me turn off the reference image. That would help. Um, we've got the colors for the, the cuffs on the legs here. Here's the right cuff and the left cuff is here. And for each of those, we've got some smart objects to help with the design. So if we want to do more than just change the color, maybe we want to put some stripes in there, uh, some kind of a design. We've got some smart objects there. So for the right leg, if you click on this one, you can see we've got the grid on there, so you can kind of see how it flows. Um, if we double click that, we've got some sample stripes in there. And this is a three stripe design, right? And we only want two stripes if we look at our reference, right? White on top, black on the bottom. So let's see how we can do that. Um, this one is the bottom stripe, so we can make it black. 
top stripes already white. I'm going to make sure I get the white that I have in this library. I think it's the same. And if we turn those off, or turn off the center stripe, we can see we've got a gap there. So there's a couple different ways we could go about this, right? Um, maybe you don't want to mess these up, right? Maybe you want to keep all these here for, for future use. Um, if you just take those two stripes that you want to use, the top and the bottom, if you hold the Alt key and well, actually hold control to select them, right? So hold control, click this one, click this one, then hold the Alt key and drag them out. And you can see the cursor turns into like two arrows there. What it's doing is it's making a copy of those layers and I'm just going to drag them out and now they're kind of on their own. I accidentally dragged them in again. Um, I'm going to turn off the sample stripes and now I've just got those two, right? And if I, if I drag them down, it'll kind of snap to the midpoint of this little canvas that we're on and I can just adjust them real quick and now I've got a top and a bottom. I'm going to hit Control Command S. I'm going to go back and now you see we've got a top white and a black bottom stripe. Um, and you might notice I'm not using pure white or pure black here. Um, not to say that you can't, but um, it, you know, those colors just look a bit extreme uh, in these templates, especially in the black, right? When you're rendering something, if you use pure black, um, it might look a little bit darker than you want. You might lose some detail, um, but the lighting is really amazing on these templates. So you might be okay with it, um, but I just, I don't like to use pure white and pure black. So um, if you want to look at the colors we're using for the white, here we have uh, hex code E8, E8, E8. And for the black, I'm using 15, 15, 15. That's, that's one that I like. You can kind of just play around in here by dragging things around. Um, but if you go pure black, it just, it looks a little bit too black. I'm just going to save that again, close that out. And the cool thing about smart objects is they can work together. So that one that we just set is actually linked to these over here. And so we're going to just turn those on and you'll start to see all that stuff fill in. So we don't have to independently go in and, and design each of those smart objects. They're linked together. So just by filling in what we want on this one, it goes and it places it in those same areas. And you can see there's even a little one here. It's number three. Uh, you can see me turning it on and off. Um, that one is again showing through the cutout. It's showing the back side. And so you can decide if you, if you want to do that. Uh, and show that design on the inside, or maybe you wanted to make it black, since a lot of times for these um, on the inner part, you'll only see the the um, edge color, if you will, kind of showing through. Uh, but I'll just I'll just leave that alone and and turn it back to how we had it in the reference image. I'm not sure if you noticed this, but um, it's kind of it's, it's showing gray in there, right? So it's showing gray in there because um, this gray or silver part of this design is actually sitting on top of this. It's not, you know, sort of smart enough to know that it's wrapped around and it can be a little bit complicated to um, see how or, or to set that up in such a way that you don't really have to do anything. So with some of these designs, there may need to be um, some slight adjustments made depending on, you know, kind of what you're doing. Um, so let's look at that design. We have the left leg design, right? That's the one. And it's duplicated here for the inner part, right? But we don't want to see, we don't necessarily want to see this part that's on top of it. Uh, maybe we just want to see the blue coming through. So if you turn it off, you'll see just the blue coming through. And, you know, if you want to make it so that there's a pinstripe showing there, um, you know, you could you could do that if you wanted to, um, but I don't think you have to in this case, right? We showed the offset earlier, but um, you know, it looks like there could be enough space between these pinstripes to where you just kind of leave that alone. So there's just different ways you can you can play with these to sort of add to the the realism or the the type of design you know that you wanna that you wanna do. So let's zoom out there and that's looking pretty good. So, so on these shorts, we've got the stripes on the outside 
Um, and typically you may not even see the, the stripes on the inside, right? You might just have like a solid blue color depending on uh, the type of shorts that you're, you're dealing with. So I think that looks good, right? That's really close to our reference image. The only thing we have left to do is get the waistband figured out and get the background figured out. So let's go up to the waistband, I'm sorry, to the reference image. And we can see we've got a black waistband with a white stripe in the middle. And we've got this logo on the center patch on the waistband. Some people would call that the belt logo or the belt, so um, different terminology. Let's go ahead and get into how we edit that waistband. And actually, you know what? Before we do that, I just noticed something. There's a 23 here on the right leg. We don't want that, right? That's not part of our reference image. If you look again, we don't have a 23 there. So let's fix that. This, if you look really closely, this is one of the coolest things about these. And I'll show you this one up here too. These logos have an embossed look to them, right? So that they look uh, there's more depth. They look 3D. They look like actual tackle twill that is uh, adhered to the jersey, the jersey material. Right, this one too, you can, it looks like you can see like the fabric. Those hang out in this embossed logo slash graphics folder. And if we go in there, all of these are different lighting and shadows uh, that really add to the texture, okay? Uh, but underneath there, you'll see this folder where it says to add your design and we have the right leg and the left and there's actually two folders for the right leg i'm sorry two layers for the right leg and two for the left the ones on the bottom that are colored gray here those are adding what we would call the depth so the shadows um, and things that make this look even more 3d i just turned it off and you can see it kind of looks pretty flat now if we turn it back on you can see the shadows pop back in and it looks more realistic now, we don't want this on the right leg, so we can just turn both of those off and it's gone, okay? I'm gonna hit Control Command Zero to zoom back to normal. We're gonna leave this one on, right? Because it's part of, part of the design that we're looking at. And then we can go ahead and just, I'm gonna minimize that folder because we're not gonna need it again. I'm also gonna go ahead and then minimize the leg designs and we're gonna get into then the waistband design. I am going to just set this overall color to the same just in case there's any little parts showing through. Um, let's get into the waistband design. So we can start with our patch. Um, if you remember from the reference image, our patch color is black. So I'm going to set that to black. Um, I'm also though, I'm going to show you how to do that from within the patch design. All right. So I'm going to go into there and I'm going to turn off the grid. And this is a color fill layer uh, for the most part. So if you if you want to set your color, you can double click and you can just drag, right, to pick a color. Or you can just click on one of your library colors and it will change for you. And then we just need to get this logo in there so we can drop that in. And by the way, this, this logo, I made this in Photoshop. Um, very simple, you know, basic sample logo, just using some shape layers. Um, so we may show you how to do that in some future tutorials, uh, but nothing that was too difficult to put together. I'm going to go ahead and leave the background here because, you know, it's, it's going to fill the entire uh, patch and work in the same way that my patch color layer worked on the main uh, tab. So I'm going to go ahead and control command S to save that. And before I close it, I'm just going to check and make sure it looks how I want. Right. And that looks just like our reference image. Okay. So I'll go ahead and close that. And now we need to do our waistband. So we've got some right and left band design. You know, in case we wanted to put maybe a pattern on there, you know, something like that. Maybe you wanted like stars going all across the waistband. You could do some stuff like that with a smart object. But for this one, we've just got a simple um, color, color pattern here. So we're gonna turn those off and we're gonna set our top color and our bottom color to black. Now I could click each one and set it, or if I do, if I hold control and I click, I've already got the top one selected, I'm gonna click the bottom one and I click my black color, they're both gonna fill in. My middle is already set to white. I'm just gonna make sure it's the same white that I have in my color library, my palette. This is the underlying band color. So if I, if I didn't have these 
individual section colors and I just wanted to do maybe a solid black, I could do that here. Okay, and this would work the same way by just turning on that middle color. And then on the inside, um, this is, we have a smart object if you want to put a design. So maybe you wanted to put some text in there, right? put a tag in there, right? Um, like a manufacturer's tag or maybe some text with the, you know, the team name or some catchphrase you want to put in there. Um, we don't have that on this design either. Um, if we look at our reference image, it's just a solid black. It's typically what you'll see on the inside is just a, you know, kind of a solid color. Um, so we're going to turn the inner band co color to black. And there we have it. Our shorts are done. We just need to set our background color. So if we go down, we have a background folder. I'm going to click on the background color layer and I'm going to just change it and see what color we like. I don't like black. I, don't, I just think that looks a little... I'm going to set it to the same blue. We've got some nice lighting and shadows to really make this thing pop out, right? Just kind of pops off the background. And then we've got some text, right? So if you wanted to change it, it says basketball shorts by default. You could you could change it and type in the name of the team that you want to just by double clicking. Not going to make any changes for this. Um, we've also got sports templates presents and Photoshop mockup, right? So those are again you could change those if you wanted to add your personal branding there, anything like that. So that looks pretty good. So we've got awesome design all done. 7K resolution. Let's just zoom in and take a look at some more of the details before we kind of finish this thing up. So you can see all the, the jersey texture in there. Shadows down within the cut, you know, the holes of the fabric. The folds. You've got lots of lighting and shadows on the folds. The waistband has that awesome texture. The patch there. You've got the stitching going around the patch on the waistband. That kind of inner texture that you would see, that stretchy uh, nylon material that you usually get, right? If you've all worn a pair of basketball shorts, you know what I'm talking about, right? So lots and lots of detail on there all the way around, right? So control command zero to zoom back out. And um, not a whole lot else to do. Just wanted to show you that. I think that's a really easy template to use if you want to get into designing shorts. You can pair this up with the basketball jerseys that are available at sportstemplates.net. Um, so the only other thing to show you if you wanted to sort of, um, you know, change the look of your design is something that comes in all of the sports templates, uh, templates that we offer is the dynamic lighting. And so what dynamic lighting does is it gives you an opportunity to change the lighting on your design. So maybe you wanted the light to be coming from a different angle. You're trying to match it up with a scene that you're working on, something like that. If you double click into the dynamic lighting, you'll see there's a couple different options in here. Um, and the easiest way to sort of manipulate the lighting is to click here on the hue saturation layer, go to the properties tab. And if you don't have that, you can go up to window choose properties and it'll pop up over here for you. And then you can just start moving some things around. So if you move the slider here, you'll see you can, you can make light come from all kinds of different angles. Okay. You can play with this as much as you want to. It's, it's totally up to you. If you start, you know, moving things around kind of what happens. So let's just say we wanted to have some light coming from the right side. Just put it there. I'm going to hit control or command S. Go back out to my main template and now you can see we have some light coming in from the right. So maybe you had a scene where there's a bright light on that side, right? That's a bit much, probably more than, than I would want. Um, so if we come back out here, maybe we just, you know, bring the opacity down a little bit more, right? So however you want to play with it, it's just one of the nice options within these templates is the ability to control the lighting um, so you're not stuck with just the preset lighting that comes in the scene. So I hope this was uh, informative for you. I hope you learned something. I hope you had some fun and you followed along. Um, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Go over to sportstemplates.net. Uh, pick up this template and many others over there at sportstemplate.net. Don't forget you get the four views, right? You get the, the front three quarter. You get the front straight on. You get the back three quarter and the back straight on all as part of this this package so it's awesome you can you can change the background you can change everything you want to about the template make a cool design like this in about i, I could do this one in about 10 minutes all right so this is obviously a little bit longer with kind of showing you what we're doing 
uh, but once you get the hang of it you can you can get through design really quickly have a lot of fun make something cool make sure you post it on social media tag sports templates and we'd love to see what you have to do so again i hope you enjoyed this thanks for watching and we will see you next time Thank you.